Hi everyone, welcome to the next video in the Excel automation series. Let's see our agenda for today. Today we are going to discuss about an activity which is called read row in Excel. Post that we are going to see an activity how do we read column in Excel. Next we are going to discuss the scenario what exactly are the real world scenario where we require read row and read column in UiPath. And all of these steps we are going to see with the help of demonstration in the UiPath Studio. We switch to UiPath Studio. First thing first, we have taken Excel application scope and that is pointed to the Excel which we have kept in the Excel folder. So this is the Excel. So first, let's say we want to read this entire row. So let's say if I am doing some automation and I want the complete this row. So A1 row is having almost 18 records. So how do we do that in UiPath? So we can go to activities and we have an activity which we call read row. Let's go to the properties. So read row the first one is the sheet name so which sheet we want to read and the starting cell so the starting cell as of now is a1 let's say i want to read the data from a1 so i'll keep this to the default settings now there is something called result so which is an i numerable of objects so i quickly go ahead and hit ctrl k and i'll just type read row results let's go to the variable pane and it is of the type i numerable object let me put a right line and I'll put a debugger here and let's try to run the flow in the debug mode. I go to locals and this variable is now filled with 18 items and this is having all the data because if I go here and if I count the items, so this is 18. Okay, so I'll quickly stop this one. So now let's say what happens if I just read the range from this guy, which is F1. So let's go to read row, go to properties and type here F1. Okay, let's again debug the file. Go to locals and now the item count is 13 because we are reading it from this. And if I just do it like this, so this count is 13. Okay, from F to R, this count is 13. So this is how read row works in UiPath. Now, the second question is how do we use the items, right? So what we can do is, since this is a type of I enumerable, we can always take in for each activity and we will just loop the read row results here and we can use a right line here, right line and next we can just print the item like this, item dot to string. Okay, so let's try to run this automation execution is completed let's go back to the output and you will see we were successfully able to print all the headers so this is how read row works apart from this we can use this thing in a link query also this is how read row works in uipath studio so next activity which we want to discuss is the read column activity so to demonstrate read column we have one more sheet in the same excel which i call sheet 2 and this is having the first column is having 30 records Let's go back to your studio. I'll just remove this read row. I'll just remove this forage from here and we go to activity. And now instead of read row, we take an activity called read column. Similarly, let's go back to the properties. So this is something called sheet name starting cell. So the sheet name now would be sheet two and the starting cell is A1 here. Let's confirm that one. So this is A1 and the results. So I hit control K and I print here column results let's go back to the variables and see column results if that of the type i enumerable object the same way we have for the read row so the output of the both the activity is same let's quickly go ahead and try to print the items we take in for each activity and the list will be now column results we take a right line and we just type item dot two string let's run this automation so the expectation is we should be able to get all these 30 records in the uipath studio go ahead and run the file execution is completed let's go back to the output and you see i was able to print all the items from the excel so this is how read column works so let's say if i want to just read the data from this this is the 24 record and i just want the last five records so i have to read it from a24 so i can anytime go here and print here a24 save it let's run the file 
go back to the output and now if you'll see I have only one two three four five six how many records are there okay one two three four five six okay let's do one thing instead of counting what we can do is anytime we can take a right line and let's just print the count of column results dot count dot to string okay so now I'll just disable this guy and let's see how many results we have got and run the file output 7 okay so from A24 how many records are there 7 records so this is how we can change this property and all of this property this string variable and the sheet name can be a argument or a variable type of string now for both the read row and the read column there is something called preserve formatting so what if i just hover over the preserve formatting let's say if the type is of currency or the date and we want to retain the formatting as we have seen in the previous video we can always go ahead and check this box for preserve formatting and it will retain the formatting of the cell so that is how read row and read columns work in your studio next we are going to discuss how exactly we can use in the real world automation consider a scenario where we have an excel sheet that is as shown in the screen and we have to read this data for sheet one right and i have to read the data for the column sales but i'm not sure where exactly the column is so sometimes sales may come in the column j in other sheet it might come in column h in some other sheet it might come in a different column okay so this number is not fixed so if i want to read this entire column so i have a property called read column but read column expects the starting cell so how can we get this cell so in such kind of scenario what we can do is we can use the read column and read row parallelly with each other and then we can get to know the exact column cell so let's jump back to your path studio here i will delete everything go to the variables i will delete the variables also okay so i want to know this cell dynamically so how can we do that so first step we take a read row and we know which row we have to refer right so that is in sheet one and the starting cell is a1 i quickly go ahead and create a variable which i call the rows okay so now we know that it will be of type i numerable object next thing is i have to find the sales reference right so the sales is available in the j column and that would be 10 so how can we do that so for that i will take an assign activity and i will take an integer variable called let's say integer the cell reference and what i will type here is i'll go to the properties and and we type here array dot index of rows dot two array dot cast of string dot two array dot sales and hit ok so it says cannot assign system dot string to system dot in 32 ok so that will be of type integer 32 ok so let's see what we are trying here so if i go back to the properties and extend it one so this row is of type i numerable so we are telling you i part to convert this i numerable to an array of string okay so this statement is responsible for converting this i numerable to array of string so we have written rows dot two array dot cast of string dot two array next in the array we want to get the index of the sales item so if you remember this column is sales so we want to know the index of the sales item let's quickly try and run this automation and see what we get we put a right line here and i will just type and cell reference dot to string since this is of type integer 32 let's try to run the file okay let's go back to the output and we can see we have got and number nine so that means that the sales is available at the position nine so since it the index start from zero so G, it is located at the j column that means it is at the 10th position and zero to nine so nine indicates that we are in the correct position okay now let's again try to get the number so if you remember the objective we have to get this cell j1 so how can we do that so for that we have to convert this 9 to an alphabet so let's see how do we do that we take an assign activity we take a variable which i call str cell and i'll just add 65 to this 
and I will call a function to convert this thing to a character so I go here go to the properties and convert dot to character okay so it says cannot assign the type system dot character okay so I go back to the variables and change this thing to a character this guy okay let's try to debug this file and see what we get debug the file let's go to the locals and str cell is now j so this is how we were able to get the cell reference now the next step is we have to read this one in the read column so our main objective was to get the column so I'll take a read column now the read column the sheet is this one and now I want to str cell plus if you remember it is starting from j1 and this is having j so we write here plus 1 okay so now it will give me j1 now let's do one thing let's try to print the column value so I take a for each loop and I trade the output of read column so read column output I'll just store it in a variable called columns data for each items in columns data just go ahead and print the items take a right line and I attempt to print this guy that is item dot to string so now if I run this automation we have not hard coded anything we have just asking the UI bot studio to get me the index for the sales and then print all the data from the sales column let's save the automation and run the file execution is completed let's go back to the output and we see we have got a data for the j column let's go up and verify so it's start with sale then 37050 529950 i go back to the excel sales 37005950 now one thing you will see here i have was not able to retain the formatting this was in form of the rupees and we were not able to retain the formatting because if I go back to the studio and see the output we are not able to retain the formatting to retain the formatting what we do is we go to the read column we go to the properties and enable the preserve formatting save the automation let's go ahead and run the file it's executing so whenever we take preserve formatting the execution will be a bit slower okay let's go back to the output and now if you'll see we were able to successfully retain the rupees symbol also so that is how the preserve formatting work and this is how we can use read column and read row simultaneously in any of the automation to get the cell references so that is all for this video i'll wrap this video here thank you for watching if you like this video please subscribe to the channel and happy automation